that was met with just a minor shrug. The House said, okay, cool, we'll, we'll pass it tonight. A week ago, that would, like you said, it would have been a doomsday scenario because it, it, the health reform bill was beginning to feel like Zeno's paradox. You know, it was like it would always go half of the way. It was never going to finally get there. And I think that this shows that the, the, the momentum has switched entirely. The House is able to just take it back and get it done in a day. The old way that Republicans were fighting this, uh, whatever they felt about the kind of political capital it gave them, the kind of momentum it gave them in process, at the end, it didn't, it didn't work. Uh, they didn't win. Uh, they didn't end up looking very good in the process to anybody other than their base. But they, they did, in fact, energize their base at least for a time. What do you think their ultimate political, what have they reaped ultimately politically from this year of process? That's a really interesting question. I mean, I think ultimately it was, a high, like you said, it was a high-stakes bet that lost. I mean, the, the situation they find themselves in, David Frum, who, you know, w who is a conservative commentator who sort of was one of the very few who said this was a mistake, this strategy, and today he lost his job at AEI. He had this great quote the other day. He said, the Republicans used to think that Fox News worked for them, and now we realize we work for Fox News, which is to say, at this point, I think the tail is wagging the dog in terms of the relationship of this very activist base to Republican Party officials. And what's going to be really interesting is, are they going to be able to move in any different direction? Are they able to be more conciliatory, have a more kind of, uh, you know, back and forth about legislative strategy, or is that discipline going to be enforced by the base that has become so powerful? Powerful over this year in which they've pursued the strategy. It is hard to imagine, even as I was able to find evidence today, just in today's news, the last couple of days' news, in terms of Republicans really breaking with this unified front strategy on same sex marriage, with Corker on financial reform, right. uh, with, with Lindsey Graham on that procedural issue with Jim Webb. You're able to find this evidence, but it does seem like there's this big problem. I mean, if this is socialism, if this is the end of a constitutional republic, if this guy is a Kenyan Marxist Nazi or whatever, it, to the extent that they've adopted that rhetoric, haven't they hamstrung any future efforts to work with him? That is exactly right. They're totally painted into a rhetorical corner in, insofar as they have at every at every juncture in this first year and two months of the, of, of, of the Barack Obama administration, they have painted things in maximalist terms. They have, have, have sort of created the most apocalyptic stakes for every legislative battle. And they have also chosen incredibly philosophical, ideological terms on which to have the debate. And once, once you're at first principles, once you're at ideological impasse, there is no place for negotiation. And so that's the place they're in right now. It's extremely difficult to imagine a scenario where they say, it's time to sit down with the Marxist, Kenyan-born uh, subverter of American values to hash out this minor technical language on financial reform. The base is going to rebel. Now, the question is, do they say to the base, you know what, screw it. You got us into this problem, or do they listen to them? My bet is that they listen to them. <laughs> well, well, that's going to be the single most interesting and I think totally unpredictable thing uh, about Absolutely. politics in Chapter 2 here. Uh, Chris Hayes, Washington editor of The Nation, thanks for joining us uh, for immediate response to this historic vote, Chris. Really appreciate it. Thanks a lot.